The author quotes verse 26 to 28 of Surah Zukhruf. It says, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لِأَبِيهِ وَقَوْمِهِ إِنَّنِي بَرَاءٌ مِّمَّا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا الَّذِي فَطَرَنِي فَإِنَّهُ سَيَهْدِينَ وَجَعَلَهَا كَلِمَةً بَاقِيَةً فِي عَقِبِهِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ And remember when Ibrahim said to his father and his people, I am totally free from everything that you worship except for the one who created me. He will guide me upon the true religion and the way of right guidance. And Allah made this saying that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah to persist amongst Ibrahim's progeny so that they might remember and return to obedience to their Lord and to worshipping him alone and repent from their unbelief and their sins. Now this means that Ibrahim salam, the one who was chosen, beloved of Allah, the iman of those upon the straight and true religion and free from shirk and the most excellent of the messengers after Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his father was azar he says i'm totally free and the word used for free is bara bara means totally free of that also he's saying that i'm totally free from everything that you worship this is synonymous with the saying La ilaha illallah, none has the right to be worshipped. Then he says that he created me upon the upright nature. Now Allah is saying except for the one who created me is synonymous with the saying illallah except Allah. So he the one free of all imperfections and the most high is to be given no shares in his worship, just as none has any share in his sovereignty. The proof for this is the saying of Allah, the Most High, Surah Al-Araf, Chapter 7, Verse 54. <laughs> Certainly, creation and the commands are his. Exalted is Allah, the Lord of all creation. This ayah restricts creation and the command to Allah, the Lord of all the creations alone. So all the creation is His and the creational and legislative command is His. Then it says, he will, the verse says that he will guide me upon the true religion and the way of right guidance. This means that he will guide and direct me to the truth and grant that I attain it. Then the verse says that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah to persist amongst Ibrahim's progeny so that they might remember and return. This means that it, the saying is a declaration of being totally free of and disassociated from everything that is worshipped besides Allah and returning here means return to it from shirk. Then the author quotes, Verse 64 of Surah Ali Imran. Qul ya ahla al-kitab ta'alaw ila kalimatin sawa'in baynana wa baynakum alla na'bud illa Allah, alla na'bud illa Allah wa la nushrik bihi shay'an wa la yattakhidha ba'duna ba'dan arbaban min dunillah. It says, O people of the book, come to a word of justice between us that we will single Allah out with all worship and will not worship anything besides Him and will disassociate ourselves from everything that is worshipped besides Him. Nor will we take 
another as lords besides Allah by obeying one another in that which involves disobedience to Allah. So if they turn away, then say, bear witness that we are Muslims submitting to Allah and making our worship purely and sincerely for him and not worshipping anything besides him. Now, the address being to Prophet ﷺ for him to debate with the people of the book, that is the Jews and the Christians. Now it says the word is that we will not worship except Allah and we will not associate anything in worship along with him and we will not take one another as lords besides Allah. Now we will not worship anything besides Allah is the meaning of La ilaha illallah. And uh, the meaning of justice between us is that you and us should be the same in that. That is that some of us will not take others as lords besides Allah, the mighty and majestic, and will not rever one another as we rever Allah, the mighty and majestic, nor worship one another as we worship Allah, not making judgment and jurisdiction for other than him. Meaning that if they turn away from what you call them to, then state to them and call them to witness that you are Muslims submitting to Allah and are free from that which they are upon with regard to their obstinate refusal and rejection of this great word La ilaha illallah which is none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. The author says in the commentary, the proof for the testification that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah is the saying of Allah the Most High. Surah At-Tawbah, Chapter 9, Verse 128. <laughs> There has indeed come to you Allah's messenger from amongst yourselves and known to you it grieves him that you should suffer. He is eager and anxious for the guidance of those of you who are astray and that they should repent and return to the truth and he is full of compassion and mercy for the believers. Now this means that this messenger is from your race and indeed from amongst your you yourselves. Just as Allah the Most High says in Surah Jummah, chapter 62, verse 2. It is Allah who sent amongst the unlettered Arabs a messenger from themselves, Muhammad wasallam, who recited to them the ayat which Allah sent down and purified them from the pollution of unbelief and taught them the book of Allah and the sunnah and before Allah sent him to them as a messenger, they were clearly astray. The verse in the text further says, It grieves him that you suffer. Now, this means that whatever grieves you, grieves him. Then the, the verse in the text says that he is eager and anxious for the guidance of those of you who are astray. This means that he is anxious that you should attain that which is beneficial to you and that harm should be repelled from you. And then it says in the verse which is in the text that they should repent and return to the truth and he is full of compassion and mercy for the believers. 
meaning that he is compassionate and merciful towards the believers and that is particular to the believers since he sallallahu alaihi wasallam was commanded to fight jihad against the unbelievers and the hypocrites so these attributes of allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam prove that he was truly the messenger of allah as it is clearly shown from the saying of allah the most high sura al araf chapter 7 verse 158 qul ya ayyuhan nas inni rasulullah ilaykum jami'a say o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to all the people i am allah's messenger to you all now the ayah in this regard proving that muhammad is truly the messenger of allah are many The meaning of the testification that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of Allah is to affirm with the tongue and to truly believe with the heart that Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Qureshi al-Hashimi is the messenger of Allah the mighty and majestic to all of the creation to the jinn and mankind as Allah the most high say surah ad-dariyat chapter 51 verse 56 wa ma khalaqtu al-jinn wa al-insa illa liya'budun i did not create the jinn and the mankind except that they worship me there cannot be any worship for allah the most high except by way of the revelation which muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with as allah the most high says surah al furqan chapter 25 verse 1 tabarak alladhi nazzala al furqan ala abdihi liyakuna lil alamin nadhira exalted is he who sent down the criterion this means the quran between truth and falsehood in stages to his slave muhammad so that he should be a warner to men and jinn that they will be punished by allah if they do not single him out with all worship and keep away from the worship of everything besides him This testification necessitates that a person believes whatever Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam informed of that he obeys him in whatever he orders and keeps away from whatever he forbade and prohibited and that he does not worship Allah except with that which he prescribed this testification also necessitates that he does not believe that Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam has any share of or any right to lordship or control over the creation nor any right to be worshiped at all rather he sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a slave and worshiper not one to be worshiped and he is a messenger who is not to be belied he does not possess either for himself or for anyone else the power to bring harm or benefit except as allah wills allah the most high says سورة الأنام chapter 6 verse 50 قل لا أقول لكم عندي خزائن الله ولا أعلم الغيب ولا أقول لكم إني ملك إن أتبع إلا ما يوحى إلي say O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to those who deny your prophethood I do not say that I am the Lord who possesses the treasure house the treasure houses of the heavens and the earth so that i should know the secrets of that which is hidden and known only to allah nor do i say to you that i am an angel rather in what i say to you and call you to i follow only the revelation which allah sends to me he is a slave who acts as he is commanded and follows the orders he is given and allah the most high says sura al jin chapter 72 verse 21 and 22 qul inni la amliku lakum darran wa la rashada qul inni lan yujirani min allahi ahadun wa lan ajida min dunihi multahada 
say o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is not in my power to bring about harm for you nor guidance rather that is for allah say o muhammad none from allah's creation could save or protect me if i was to disobey him nor could i find any refuge except with him then it says in surah al araf chapter 7 verse 188 qul la amliku li nafsi naf'an wa la dharran illa ma shaa Allah wa law kuntu a'lamu al-ghayba lastakthartu min al-khayr wa ma massaniya as-su' in ana illa nadhirun wa bashirun li qawmin yu'minun say o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is not within my power to bring benefit to myself nor to keep away harm except as allah wills and if i knew what the future holds i could amass a great deal of wealth and harm would not befall me but i am just a messenger from allah sent down by him to warn those who disobey him of his punishment and to give glad tidings of his reward for those who truly believe in him and are obedient to him from this it is known that nothing from the creation deserves or has the right to be worshiped not allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam nor any of the creation lesser than him and that worship may only be for allah the most high alone it says in surah al anam chapter 6 verse 162 and 163 قل ان صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وبذلك امرت وانا اول المسلمين say o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam indeed my prayer my sacrifice my living and my dying are all purely and solely for allah lord of all creation there is no share of any of that for other than him that is why my lord ordered me and i am the first of this nation to submit to allah as a muslim the right of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that you give him the position and standing which allah the most high gave him which is that he is the slave of allah and his messenger may allah extol and send blessings of peace upon him the evidence that the prayer and the zakat are from the religion is the saying of allah the most high surah al bayyana chapter 98 verse 5 وما امروا الا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين حنفاء ويقيموا الصلاه ويؤتوا الزكاه and they were not commanded except that they should worship allah alone making their worship and obedience purely for him upon the true religion and free from shirk and that they should establish the prayer and pay the zakat this aya is general and covers all type of worship so a person must perform all of them purely and sincerely for allah the mighty and majestic being upon the straight and true religion and following the revealed way prescribed by him this is an example of something particular being mentioned after the general so establishment of the prayer and payment of the zakat are types of worship however allah the one free of all imperfections mentioned them specifically due to their great importance so the prayer is a bodily worship and the zakat is a worship involving giving wealth and they are mentioned jointly in the book of allah the mighty and majestic the worship of allah making the religion purely for him keeping aloof from shirk and establishment of the prayer and payment of the zakat the true and straight religion means containing no crookedness since it is the religion laid down by allah the mighty and majestic and allah's religion is straight 
and upright just as allah the most high says surah al anam chapter 6 verse 153 This is my straight path so follow it and do not follow any of the other paths for they will split you and take you away from that which he prescribed for you Just as the noble ayah mentioned by the author contains a mention of worship and the prayer and the zakat then it comprises the reality of tawhid and that is to make worship purely for allah the mighty and majestic without any inclination to shirk so whoever does not make his worship purely for allah is not a mawhid a person upon tawhid and whoever makes his worship for other than allah is not a person upon tawhid the author then says that the evidence of fasting that is siyam is the saying of allah the most high surah al baqara chapter 2 verse 183 ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kutiba alaykum as siyam kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun O you who believe fasting is prescribed as an obligation for you as it was prescribed as an obligation for those who came before you Now he's saying as it was prescribed as an obligation for those who came before you contains a number of beneficial lessons number 1 the importance of fasting since allah the mighty and majestic made fasting obligatory upon the nations before us this shows that it is something which allah the mighty and majestic loves and that it was binding upon every nation number 2 is for this ummah since it is not alone in having this duty to fast placed upon it a duty which may be difficult for the souls and the bodies and number 3 an indication that allah the most high perfected the religion for this ummah and completed it with the virtues which were given to the earlier nations in this aya allah the mighty and majestic makes clear the wisdom behind fasting he says la allakum tattaqun that you should fear allah through fasting and attain the characteristics of taqwa resulting from it this benefit was indicated by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his saying whoever does not abandon falsehood and evil actions then allah has no need that he should abandon his food and drink reported by bukhari hadith number 127 then the evidence for hajj is the saying of allah the most high wa ma dakhalahu kana amina wa lillahi ala an-nas hijju al-bayt man istata'a ilayhi sabila wa man kafara fa inna allah ghaniyun 'anil 'alamin and hajj to allah's sacred house is an obligation upon those able to perform it and whoever refuses and rejects the obligation of hajj to allah's house then allah has no need of him or of any of the creation this ayah was sent down in the ninth year after the hijra when the hajj became an obligation however allah the mighty and majestic says those able to perform it so it shows that hajj is not an obligation upon one unable to perform it in the saying of allah the most high then allah has no need of him or of any of the creation now this means that there is a proof that whoever abandons performance of hajj from those able to perform it is guilty of kufr that is infidelity however it is 
kufr which does not take a person out of the religion according to the saying of the majority of the scholars due to the saying of abdullah bin shakik the companion of allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam had not used to regard the abandonment of any action to be infidelity except for abandonment of the prayer reported by tirmizi hadith number 2114